Welcome friends to the man cave. OptiChip here. I am going to show you how to use Conky today. We're going to copy the Conky file from my main machine over to my test machine. We're going to unzip it. We're going to move some files around. We're going to modify the script and show you how to move it around on your screen. And then we'll call it good. So let's get to work. Uh, we're going to use a secure copy, SCP, and then my user account on my main machine and then of course the address of my main machine and then where is the file on my main machine well it's in the home chris folder and it's called conky.tar.gz and then we are going to just drop it right into the folder that we're in so it's just a dot give it the password and presto there's the file it gets copied over we can do an ls now and there is conky we're going to unzip it with the tar command ZXVF and then CON and at this point since there's no other CON files in my home folder I can hit the tab key it's going to uh, add on the rest of the name of the file for me boom there it is unzip now I've got a folder called dot conky it's a hidden folder so we can go to it by hitting CD space dot conky now we're in the hidden conky folder. We can do an ls and it shows only three files. Let's do an lsacl, ls-acl. This is going to show hidden files and folders as well. You can see I've got a dot fonts folder and I've got a dot conky rc. Now the dot conky rc file needs to sit in our home folder. And if we do a pwd right now we can see that we are not in the home folder. We are in the dot conky folder so our home folder is home Chris so slash home slash Chris we need to move the dot conky file back one folder so we can do that by doing a mv dot conky rc two dots and a slash and that'll move it back one folder we're gonna do the same thing with the fonts folder so we're gonna do a move dot f o n t f o n t s back one folder. Now if we do an ls-acl again, all of a sudden those files are gone. So we will move back one folder ourselves by doing a cd space dot dot. So now we should be in the home slash chris folder. We are. Now um, since I've got a font in the fonts folder, it's called uh, Nero Political, I think, uh, we need to tell our machine and we're going to use this font. So in order to do that, we're going to do an fc-cache. And that's going to look at the fonts in our dot fonts folder. And it's going to make the system be able to use them. So now we're done with the fonts folder. We can go back to our home folder. Um, also, if you're in any folder on your system, you can just do a CD and hit enter, and it should take you back to the home folder as well. I'm just used to hitting the CD space dot dot all the time. But all you have to do, another shortcut is just hit CD, boom, you're back to your home folder. You can verify that with a PWD, home Chris. Okay, um, with this installation, uh, Liquid Lemur, it already comes with Conky. So Conky's there by default, so all we have to do is type in Conky, and we should get whatever um, our dot Conky RC file tells us to do. And look at that. There's this cool looking conky script. It's got some rings. It shows you your network speed, um, how much disk space you've got, your swap space, your RAM, and your CPU. Uh, up around the top it's got the date. Date and time. We've got our time here. Uh, we're at the man cave. You can change that in the conky RC file. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and it pulls the temperature from wherever you are at. So your current location, I'll show you how to go and change it to a different location as well. It also tracks your uptime, how many processes are running, and how many processes are on the machine. Down at the bottom here, it's got the name of your machine, the architecture that you're running, and which kernel version you're using. It also has a little logo up in the upper right-hand corner, which you can change to whichever distro you are using. You can customize that yourself just by using um, you know image editor and slapping the little image up there that you want. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at that stuff. We're going to hit uh, Control C right now because Conky is running in this terminal window. Boom. That kills Conky and it's out of here. Most of you guys use um, graphical editor file uh, editor programs and that's fine. Um, I'm I'm pretty much a hardcore command line kind of guy. I do like to use um, Vi. Uh, some of you use Nano. And when you're working with Conky, because Conky is a a daemon usually when it's running, if you use a graphical editor and save it, you can actually see that Conky makes the change while you're still in the graphical editor, so you can manipulate the way that Conky moves around on your screen with a graphical editor. So let's go ahead and do that. So leaf pad is what we use here, and we're going to modify the .conky RC file. Hey, there it is. So here's our conky RC file. I'm going to pull up another terminal window. And we're going to go ahead and launch conky in the daemon view. So this is just going to put conky into view. And we can type in clear, and then we're back at our terminal, and we can do whatever we want. So the dash D gives us back our terminal after the program launches. You can type in exit. Terminal goes away. Conky is still running. So now we can modify our Conky here. So we can say uh, uh, this this will track uh, the average of eight different CPU cores. So if you only have two cores, you can change that to two. Um, even if you have eight cores, you can only sample two if you want. You can sample one core if you're on a single core processor. This one happens to be a four core virtual machine. So I've got four cores, I might as well go ahead and set it to monitor four cores. And you can override stuff, you can tell it to double buffer, um, you can tell it how much text to have in the buffer, you can change your temperature units, I happen to use Fahrenheit, you can change that to Celsius if you want. Depends on where you live. Um, there are two versions of that, we're going to actually test that right now. I'm going to take out this second temperature unit. In order to comment anything, it's just a pound sign. And now we're going to go ahead and save. So in order to save in leaf patch, you hit control S. And you can see our temperature is still there. Still the same uh, reading, so I guess we don't need the second temperature unit because it's already got one defined up here. Temperature unit. In fact, you know what? Let's just go ahead and delete this all together. Go to the end of the file. Um, hold down the shift key and you can hit the arrow down. It highlights the whole line. And then you can just hit the delete key and it deletes it. Nice and clean. Over here, we've got, uh, you can see our font has been defined. So our Nero political font, which kind of gives it that. The almost space age kind of look really really cool looking font here but if you've got another font that you like you can definitely um, search and replace Nero political with whatever font you feel is going to look better on your machine you can modify the colors that are, are viewed you can see that uh, we've got some greens we've got some whites um, so you can definitely change you can definitely change the FFFFF to whatever color you want. Um, depends on your background too. I'm using a back black or black background so it looks good on black um, to have a, a white font pop out at you. And we can go to see right up in here is where we're actually going to see hey there's the man cave I just saw it. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that you all can see it. There's the man cave right there. So you can change that to wherever you're at. Um, you can tell it home. If you're at the office, you can put the office. You can tell it even what machine it is. It doesn't matter. It's it's static information for you only. So if you go to uh, weather.noaa.gov, let's go ahead and do that really quick. And I'll show you how to change to a different code. 
Alright, here we are at uh, the International Weather Service. So you can select your state and your city once you do select your state. Or if it's international, you can select your country. So let's go to Albania. And then you can select uh, your location. Tirana. So that's the only one in Albania that's actually being monitored. We'll tell it to go. And then it's using this four-letter code which is L-A-T-I and at L-A-T-I in Tirana it's currently 68 degrees Fahrenheit it's a little warm over there so let's go ahead and test that out L-A-T-I so you come to the end of this line and there's the four the four letter code L-A-T-I so this should now look at Albania for its temperature. And we're going to go ahead and save it. And remember, it was 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at that, 68. Pulls it right in there. Go ahead and change it back to KONP. Save it. And we'll come back to 37-ish uh, degrees. My conky hasn't updated on my desktop yet. It does pull it every once in a while for you. So that's how to change uh, where your weather comes from. Uh, the next line, the next filled in line down is the Conky logo line. And that's where it actually sets the size of the logo up in the corner and what its location is. So you can mess around with this and it will actually um, either make the logo bigger or smaller for you depending on what you need. Okay, in order to move our information up or down, sometimes depending on what screen resolution you're using, um, your conky rings will, will get a little off center with the text. And in order to move the text up or down, you can actually modify these little lines right here. So we can definitely move the the CPU text over here and if we change that to let's say instead of negative 10 we're gonna go on the positive side and that should move our text for CPU way down yeah, there it goes so it's moved our text for CPU down closer to this other ring and let's go ahead and move it back up uh, maybe we want a little bit closer to our circle as well and boom there, it's sitting in there nicely. It's right underneath the uh, right underneath the the part of the ring, so you can manipulate the um, the text settings of where the text sits by modifying the V offsets for each of these. Now, sometimes the rings themselves are not in the right location, and that's another file we're going to have to modify. I'll show you that one right now.